I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today, reporting from Chicago at the RSNA. Detecting cancer early can be crucial to outcome. Positron emission mammography may be one way to go, as we hear from Dr. Kathy Schilling. One of our goals at the center is to try to use new tools, but only tools that are going to give us incremental uh, numbers of cancers, and cancers that are smaller, cancers that we're unable to identify with our other imaging tools. We had 167 index cancers. We can see here <clears throat> that PAM was able to identify 90% of our non-invasive breast cancers. These are cancers that are still contained within the ductal systems. They haven't broken out. They have no opportunity to metastasize. It's the earliest uh, cancers that we are able to detect. And this is in contrast to breast MRI, where we detected 83% of these non-invasive breast cancers. So the trend here is that PAM indeed is going to permit us to be able to identify cancers before they're detected by breast MRI. When we go to, when tumors are given time, some of the non-invasive breast cancers will advance to invasive breast cancers. And you can see here that the PEM also was able to identify our smallest invasive breast cancers, those T1A lesions, which are five millimeters in size or less, 100% of the time compared to breast MRI, which only identified them 75% of the time. Now, granted, these are small numbers, but in our additional studies, hopefully these trends will continue. We looked at uh, the identification of additional pathology in the opposite breast, and when we do a, a study such as this, this breast has no known cancer in it, it sort of simulates a high-risk screening study. We identified 63 additional pathologies 19% of which were uh, positive for malignancy. The performance of uh, sensitivity of PEM and MRI was equivalent, but what we can see here is that MRI <clears throat> had more false positives, more false, false alarms for our patients than did PEM. And this is something that's very important because you can imagine being called back, say, having uh, been found out that there's something abnormal on your MRI having to come back, have an additional ultrasound examination or additional mammography, and potentially having to have an additional biopsy, and all, only to find out that there's really nothing there. It was a false alarm. This is very disturbing to our patients. It's very disturbing to us to have to, to, have to recommend that patients come back and have these additional studies, and it delays the onset of the time of surgery, um, and it's very costly to our healthcare system. When we look at the effect on menopausal status, we have found that there's really, the accuracy of PEM does not suffer at all between patients who are premenopausal, perimenopausal, or postmenopausal. It is effective in all, in all groups. There's no hormonal influence. And I'm sure as if, if you uh, have, know a little bit about the MRI uh, data, um, we really suffer with breast MRI if the patient is not imaged at the appropriate time in our menstrual cycle, and we do not see this effect with um, PEM. Similarly, when we look at breast density, we see uh, similar accuracy with all types of breast density from fatty tissue to extremely dense tissue. This is unlike um, mammography, as we spoke of earlier. There's no effect of breast density on the, um, the function of, of PEM. Uh, in conclusion, I'd like to say in my last two years of use of PEM, um, I find it very easily integrated into a busy, comprehensive breast clinic. The interpretation is not difficult to learn, unlike breast MRI. We found that PEM is not affected by menopausal status or breast density. And when it concerns additional uh, lesion identification, PEM and MRI had equivalent sensitivity, but there are fewer false positives with PEM as compared to breast MRI, which I think can greatly impact um, uh, the care we give to our patients. Where do we go from here? Well, hopefully we're going to move from the 20 sites that are now existing uh, in the United States to an international availability to be able to offer this uh, tool to uh, women around the world. We hope to expand our indications, which currently are just for patients with recently diagnosed breast cancer, to high-risk screening, and we'll be starting a clinical trial comparing PEM to MRI and high-risk screening. But it's all, to me, about personalized medicine. I want to be able to take uh, a patient, find out what her risk factors are, what her breast density is, what her 
hormonal status is, what her um, personal issues with claustrophobia or BC or other medical problems, and treat her with, diagnose her with the appropriate tool that's right for her. We can't fit everyone into the same imaging protocols. We need to really turn more towards personalized medicine. And I think PEM is another tool that gives us the opportunity to achieve, achieve this. So, an interesting and emerging technology, but available in only 20 centers in the United States. In Chicago at RSNA, I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today.